Innovation relies on momentum, and that's why we're going even further to support Ontario's innovators. This is a critical time to ensure that innovation continues to play a very important part to ensure that Ontario becomes a global leader in economic growth. Science and innovation are a powerful means to overcome our challenges, create new opportunities, and do good for each other. Their cutting-edge products and services are attracting attention around the world. And more importantly, these collaborations are creating new jobs, generating investment, and strengthening Ontario's economy. quite clear from what I see in front of me that entrepreneurship and innovation continues to be very alive and well. The key technology that EVE Medical has developed is a device that allows women to self-collect samples to screen for chlamydia, gonorrhea and HPV without a doctor. The My Voice Communication Aid is a product for people with profound speech and language disabilities. There are millions of people in North America that have a range of disabilities that lead them to be partly or completely unable to speak. And so My Voice is an app that runs on iOS and Android devices that's a better communication aid than those that have previously existed. I can have my idea and nobody else seems to think that way, but it's okay for me. In order for research to be valuable, people need to make informed decisions every moment of our lives. What makes this so innovative is really how few materials it uses, allowing it to be very low cost. It's all about innovation. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the Ontario Centres of Excellence webinar on the evolving energy sector and its career opportunities. We're thrilled today to have over 400 people from across the globe joining us today. My name is Roxy Hamilton, and I'm a talent manager at the uh, Ontario Centres of Excellence. Before we get started today, I'd like to tell you about some of the talent programs that we offer at the Ontario Centres of Excellence and uh, how they can benefit you. First, um, we have a Connections uh, undergraduate program that sponsors fourth year capstone projects for uh, undergraduate students and it partners uh, industry with students on their capstone projects. This is a very popular program for uh, undergrads and it's a very unique program in the province of Ontario. One of our sponsors, in fact, of the Connections program is the Ontario Power Authority, who sponsors energy projects within the province. Also, I wanted to mention before we get started, our, discovery, uh, our annual Discovery Showcase, which happens in Toronto every year, uh, this, uh, next year in May, May 27th and 28th, it's the Toronto Convention Centre, and it is the premier North American uh, showcase for innovation that's happening in Ontario. It's an excellent 
venue for students to come and network and to see what's going on in the innovation space. There are also, it's a very dynamic con uh, conference and uh, we have lots of uh, showcasing of students and you might want to watch for the video competitions that come up around the time of February, so watch our website for that. Also, we have just launched um, a job matching website which may be of interest to you and it is called Connext. It is uh, designed to have you register your CV and we, have com we invite companies to post, job post their jobs on the site as well. So that's a good thing for you to make note of. We've provided links here for your convenience. So moving on, we're very pleased to have experts here today who will speak to you about the challenges and opportunities that exist in the evolving energy sector from an industry perspective. What are the job op opportunities? What are the skills required? And what sort of talent are they looking for to stay competitive and grow their businesses? Presenting this afternoon is Jenny Millinen, Manager of the Technology Development and Commercialization Fund with the Ontario Power Authority. Ravi Sithapathy, Manager, System Innovation and Advanced Grid Development at Hydro One. And Cameron Carver, CEO at Temporal Power. Based on the number of students who have registered for this webinar, we felt it important that there be lots of time for Q&A. We will be taking your questions by text during the presentation and then on your behalf I'll present them to the speakers after the program. Those questions that aren't addressed at that time will be addressed on our website by the experts. So watch for that as well on our website. Again, I'd like to say thank you for being with us today. Your interest in careers in the energy sector is clear and as a result, we will be developing a second webinar on energy to continue the sharing of information with you. The Ontario Power Authority has a very important role in Ontario's electricity sector. OPA coordinates province-wide conservation efforts and is responsible for planning the electricity system for the long term. I'd now like to invite Jenny Melanin, Manager of the Technology Development and Commercialization Fund with the Ontario Power Authority to present on innovation in conservation. Jenny. Hello everyone. As Roxy said, my name is Jenny Mullen and, and I'm a manager at the Ontario Power Authority. So within the context of today's discussion, I'll be focusing on the opportunities within energy conservation. As hopefully you'll agree with me, uh, the opportunities are many, they're multidisciplinary, and they're all around you. And I really hope that I get a chance to excite you about these opportunities. So what, I, what I'm going to do is highlight for you four uh, potential career paths within energy conservation in Ontario and then I'll tell you about how OCE can work with you to take you one step closer to your dream job within energy conservation here in Ontario. So in terms of Roxy, the, the career opportunities in Ontario in energy conservation, like I said, they're multidisciplinary, they're many and they're growing. Estimates say that at least 6,000 new jobs will be created just to meet the near-term conservation demand in the province. So of course you're asking, well, what are those actual opportunities? Well, let me tell you about four potential career paths. Imagine being an energy manager. This is someone who works within an organization and is responsible for managing their energy use. Imagine being in a mine and responsible for all of their energy use. Mines are one of the largest users of electricity in the province. Imagine the impact that you could have. Imagine working within a built office building such as this and minimizing the use of electricity so that company can be more profitable. Those are just two examples of energy manager positions within the sector. Another very large opportunity within energy conservation is working within engineering and technical services. So this is working with clients to help them identify opportunities for energy conservation and to implement projects which actually then realize those savings. So consider working with homeowners who are looking to design the next generation net zero homes. Your solutions will help those families live in advanced buildings which are comfortable and affordable. 
Don't forget about the institutional sector. Think about municipalities, universities, hospitals, and schools. Imagine having a client who's a hospital and helping them do a retrofit project so that they're able to save money on energy so that they can put that money towards patient care. You can have a significant impact. Within engineering and technical services, the opportunities are immense. Another opportunity within the uh, energy conservation field is to have an impact province and citywide. If that's something that's of interest to you, then I would encourage you to consider um, a career looking at policy and program development. And so those opportunities can be found working within the government, within organizations, government agencies such as the Ontario Power Authority, within utilities such as Hydro One, and also within municipalities across the province. Imagine the impact you could have in one of those jobs. And so last but not least, and certainly not the only other opportunity in this sector, is working within technology development and entrepreneurship. Imagine starting your own company or being part of a company that is developing a new technology which will provide an entirely new solution, maybe a new motor, a new building system control um, for those of us in Ontario to use. Not only will you be providing new solutions, you'll actually be helping to generate jobs within the province of Ontario. So the opportunities for energy conservation jobs and careers in Ontario are significant. They're multidisciplinary, they're many, and they're growing. And I'd strongly consider you, I strongly hope that you consider one of these opportunities. So the good news is OCE has many programs to actually help take you one step closer to those opportunities. And Roxy's already mentioned a couple of them. One that I'd especially like to focus on is the Energy Connections Program. And the video that follows will do a very good job at uh, discussing what that program is and what the opportunities are. So I'll leave the great explanation to that. But before we get to that, I just want to thank the Ontario Centers of Excellence for, the, for their, their uh, hosting of this particular uh, webinar. It's a very important topic. I certainly hope that I've uh, given you some information to help you consider a career in energy conservation. And I hope that you will join myself and my colleagues in developing a very rewarding career within energy conservation in Ontario. And good luck with your studies and your job search. Thank you. OCE's role is to work with industry to help them get research uh, done at the academic institutions in Ontario. And secondly, to give good experience real-world experience to the students at our colleges and our universities uh, that's based upon real research in the real world. The OPA is responsible for the long-term energy planning of the Ontario electricity sector. Our goal is to ensure a clean, reliable energy source for the future. The OPA saw an opportunity through the, o the OCE Connections program to reach young students in colleges and universities before they graduated so that they would be able to partner different companies with the students and to have the students gain first-hand knowledge and skills that would be important to the energy sector. The OCE is a great partner to leverage where we want to move forward. The OCE provides us with access to students and access to universities and colleges that have that opening door, that first vision as to what innovation will be for the future. If you look at the opportunities that are in Ontario, green jobs is a great, great area to focus on. There are an incredible amount of jobs, even if we look at conservation in Ontario alone, there's about 6,000 jobs that are available that are needing to be filled. There's an incredible amount of green jobs that are needed for the future. It's a ripe field to be involved in today, and it's something that I think most students, if they're looking for making a difference in the future, this is the sector to be in. We see projects in the area of implementation of new tools, new software tools, it's economic analysis, green building design, uh, auditing purposes for energy audits as well. So it's quite broad the kinds of exciting projects that we see. On an annual basis, OC hosts its OC Discovery Conference, and it's a, it's a wonderful innovation conference from across Ontario, and it's also international. At Discovery, these OPA Connection students have the opportunity to make presentations to an external panel 
These students were selected from a broader group when our business development managers and the academic institutions came together and reviewed these projects. From there, a top five was sent to the Discovery Conference. From there, we had a wonderful selection of, of students and projects. The kinds of projects that we saw ranged from everything from uh, snow removal of photovoltaic cells, which is a concern within the industry. We also saw projects that stem from designing new wind turbine blades and technologies. The Vehicle to Grid concept, or V to G, would allow EVs to act as battery backup for the entire power grid. And the winner of the Ontario Power Authority Energy Conservation Project Award goes to Chris Harris, McLean Shea from Queen's University. The really amazing part about the, the green movement that we're seeing today and the energy sector as we're seeing it evolve today is it's becoming smarter, it's becoming innovative, and it's becoming an area where people who enter this field realize that they're making a difference for the future, and they really are making a difference. Thank you, Jenny. That was really an eye-opener for the career opportunities that are, that are out there for the energy sector. Next, we'll hear from R Ravi Sethapathy, Manager System Innovation and Advanced Grid Development at Hydro One. Hydro One is the largest electricity transmission and distri distribution company in Ontario, accounting for about 96% of Ontario's transmission capacity. Welcome, Ravi. Welcome everybody. Uh, just a little bit of preview of who we are. We are a transmitter and a distributor company in the province of Ontario. So the big transmission lines that you see along the highway corridors, that's our transmission system. And then the wires that you see on our poles is our distribution system when you take the very back roads off streets and in the various parts of Ontario. So we largely cater to the people of Ontario and our customers are large industrial customers retail customers, municipal customers like the City of Toronto and others, and also we serve the residential customers. 1.2 million customers are our direct residential customers. So that's an overview of who we are. And I just thought today, from where Jenny left off, is to sort of do a little bit of a deep dive on the wire side or on the utility aspects of where such opportunities lie. And I have a small presentation, and I'm going to walk you through that, if I could. Uh, and they, it's titled, you know, Emerging Issues and Opportunities for the Power Engineering Sector. So in there, there are three sort of aspects I wanted to talk about. The first is where we were, if I go back to my own career, where was I 25 years ago? Where are we now with respect to the emerging changes and what are the opportunities that we see in the marketplace? So let me begin where we were. When I joined as an engineer trainee many, many years ago, we actually had to excel in engineering. And why was that? Was simply because our structure, our planning processes moved much more slowly. We didn't have the computerized tools that we had, uh, that we have today. And we had to be therefore very detailed in our manual process. But times have changed so much dramatically that in my own career, I've seen dramatic changes in the last 15 years alone. So let me look at where we are today and, and where we are is largely on the following five themes. First, there's an aging workforce, which means for young folks like you, tremendous opportunities with respect to filling in after we have gone. Second, is our infrastructure is aging. And with aging infrastructure, there's a choice you have to make. Do I buy yesterday's equipment or did I buy tomorrow's or today's equipment? And it's a very, very engineering oriented choice that you make. And it's very important that we do that simply because once an investment is made in our industry, it's there with you for 40 years. So unlike the entertainment industry, it doesn't change that often. The third aspect of it, and the next speaker will elucidate to that, is the innovation and technologies that's coming at us. The fact that IT is here, the fact that control systems are here, the fact that telecom is here, is completely changing the way the utility sector is operating. And that was not there when I was a young man, and that was not there even about 15, 20 years ago. But the fact that all those four are converging in the power system sector is actually making us completely having to rethink all of our processes, 
the technologies we employ, and how we operate the power system. Last but certainly not the least is the notion of customer connectivity. The customer today is very, very engaged. He would like to be engaged and stay there and would also seek options. Again, something that was not there 25 years ago. So that seeking of options means more tools, feedback mechanisms through the internet, through telephone, iPhone apps, whatever you take. And in there, there is a feedback mechanism that the customer expects to see with respect to what we provide as a service. So a lot of great, great opportunity for you young folks as you look at it. So the question is, what is the impact of all this? There is a lot of workload that's coming in the utility sector as a result of everything I've just said. There is an increase for research and development with partnerships, industry, the academia, the government, the Ontario Centers of Excellence. We are partners with them in a very big way. And so there's a lot of partnerships that's going on in the portfolio that I manage. And last but certainly not the least, the need for power systems engineer. So in closing, let me talk about what that power system means. It is not just electrical. It's got shades of environmental, shades of efficiency. It's got mechanical thermodynamic systems. It's got chemical systems. And all that constitutes the new power system that we talk about, not just the electrical the way it was perhaps 20, 25 years ago. So with that, I'll stop and thank you all for your careers. And uh, if you have got questions, we'll probably take them at the end of the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having I've, We've certainly hear an awful lot about the aging workforce, but we don't hear about the other challenges you face. So thanks very much for that insight. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cameron Carver. Cameron Carver is the CEO of Temporal Power. Cameron brings more than 10 years of experience as a technology entrepreneur and a management consultant specializing in clean technologies. Cameron will speak today about the opportunities in energy storage. Cameron? Thanks for having me here today, Roxy. You're welcome. And uh, welcome, everybody. I look forward to uh, speaking with you over the next uh, 10 minutes or so, and I'm going to uh, cover today a little bit about the opportunities, uh, more from a, a, a technology development, uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, specifically uh, energy storage perspective. So uh, I'll start by introducing you to Temporal Power. So our company is a, an Ontario-based uh, technology developer of energy storage systems. Uh, when you think of energy storage, you might be thinking of, of batteries, but what we actually do is develop a mechanical battery called a flywheel. And these are the highest energy flywheels in the world. Uh, we've worked closely with OCE, Hydro One, uh, and other uh, organizations within the Ontario electricity system to help make this possible. And so we're a, a three-year-old company that's been growing quite quickly and uh, have some, some exciting uh, technology that we'll be introducing both here in Ontario and, uh, and internationally. So. To build a little bit more out on, uh, on energy storage, um, while we develop a flywheel, a, a mechanical system, there are some other very exciting technologies that uh, are being used in the energy storage space that you should be aware of. Uh, compressed air technologies, battery technologies, uh, all kinds of different ways of storing energy that help us deal with uh, the aging grid and the new demands on that grid. So as we introduce uh, wind power, solar power, and places on the grid that they've never been put before, and quite frankly, the grid was never designed to deal with, you have new challenges. And for an entrepreneur, new challenges mean great opportunities. So uh, what, uh, what the storage systems specifically uh, look to do uh, vary, uh, depending on the technology and what its, uh, what its profile is. But we assist in, in uh, uh, bringing renewable power onto the grid, dealing with the, the wind gusts and cloud cover that go over, say, a solar plant, and helping make that nice and smooth and looking like a traditional power generation uh, facility. We can also provide ancillary services where, which is essentially to say, uh, power generators have provided a number of services, some of which they're very well suited to do, others which it's a little bit of a stretch. Energy storage technologies, because of their characteristics, can offer a better way of doing some of these things. Now, 
uh, the utility business being a conservative and well-established uh, network that, that de de depends very importantly on, on reliability, it can, be, it can be challenging to introduce new technologies. And I think Ravi, Ravi spoke to that. Um, so we need the support of organizations like Hydro One, like, Ontario, like the uh, uh, OPA, and others to support the technologies as they come up to make sure that here uh, we're able to introduce new technologies, demonstrate them on the grid, and provide a better system here in Ontario, but also a, an export opportunity that creates jobs around the world. So how do you gain access to these exciting spaces? Well, I think that, you know, there's, there are technology companies. So in Ontario, there's companies like Temporal Power. Uh, there are a number of other technology development companies that are coming up with some great and wonderful ways to improve the grid. So look for those. You can also look at engineering firms. So there's a number of, uh, there's a strong base of engineering firms here uh, in Ontario that focus on uh, things like uh, uh, electrical systems, uh, civil design. So they have, they have a touch point and a role to play in deploying these technologies. So that's another access point. Companies like Hydro One uh, also have a, uh, um, uh, clearly have, have, have access to these technologies are deploying them for the first time, having experience with them. So I think you know, there are a number of ways in which you can engage with the electricity sector and touch on, on energy storage, depending on uh, you know, what, 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 what fits uh, sort of your personal background and uh, where you see going. From a, a functional uh, roles and skills perspective, uh, I'll speak from, from, from temporal power. We largely focus on technical, um, technical roles. So, uh, we hire engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, civil engineers, um, folks who work in physics. We also work it with, uh, with project managers who help make sure that uh, the transition between developing the technology and installing it goes smoothly and our customers uh, have, a, uh, have a great experience working with us. Uh, we also have business, uh, business support functions uh, like any other business that we grow, uh, you know, as we grow, we, we, we have more, more of those types of needs. So uh, I think the electricity sector and the energy sector is an exciting place to be. It's in a point of transition. Uh, look for great opportunities. And uh, you know, I, think, uh, I think depending on, on, on your orientation, there's a, a number of great spots to start looking. And uh, you know, Temporal Power is, uh, you know, has, we've hired quite a few folks in the last year. We're going to start hiring again in, uh, in 2013. We'll be sure to use OCE's uh, Connext uh, website where we posted our sites, our, uh, our openings before, and we'll do so again. Uh, so thanks very much for the opportunity to uh, to speak today, and uh, good luck to everybody as they consider your as you consider your career options. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cameron. Before we go to the uh, the student community's questions, I have one of my own. And that is, you mentioned skill, uh, skills short, uh, skills, and I'm particularly interested in uh, skills shortages because I read that in the paper every other day that there are skills shortages. What are you seeing in terms of shortages in the energy sector? Well, um, I think for for us, we are are looking largely for um, you know, very motivated, very well educated. Uh, uh, folks who are up for are up for a challenge, and I think that Ontario actually has has a lot of that talent, and I'm sure a lot of it's um, you know represented by 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 your audience today. Um, so you know our our challenge is finding the right fit with people who are going to be excited about about working with us, but also um, you know ready to 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 tackle technically the the challenges that are immediately at hand. Thank you. Are, are there specific technical skills that, that you require? There are specific technical skills that we require. So we look for, um, you know, we are a mechanical uh, energy storage system. So mechanical engineers uh, are, are folks that we are uh, always interested in speaking with, electrical engineers. Uh, we also have a number of, of, uh, of technician and technologist roles uh, to help support our, our manufacturing facilities. So um, it's fairly it's fairly broad. I wouldn't say we 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 hire largely in one particular set. Well, we, we hire within the energy sector, but within the engineering sector, we're actually quite quite broad. We have, have a fairly wide need there. That's great to hear. Thank you. 
Okay, Ravi uh, has joined us again, and we'd like to address some of your questions now. And I'll just go through them as best I can. Uh, uh, just a reminder that those th uh, questions that we don't get to today will be answered on our website. I'll start with Sayadeli. How can I start for the OCE Energy Connection Program with OPA? Oh, with the, uh, oh, okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> mm. So for the Energy Connections pro Program, you first of all, need, you need to be working on your capstone project and you need to have an industry partner. Typically, we do a, a, an application competition around this time of the year. It starts in uh, September. Actually, the deadline is this weekend, so you're a little bit late for this year. But um, if you are in an Ontario academic institution doing your fourth year capstone project, and I would suggest that you talk to your professor about the uh, Connections program and you can find out more details about that program on our website. The website, by the way, is www.oce-ontario.org. Moving on, Hossein asked, I am a grad student at Ryerson studying the commercialization potential of algae biofuels. My question comprises two parts. First, there is a lot of activity in energy efficiency, PVS and wind. But I am curious about opportunities within the biofuels sector. Secondly, how can I apply knowledge of commercializing innovations into these more popular sectors? First of all, this is all forms of energy. It's only in the last five years that all forms of energy, green energy, has been promoted thanks to science, innovation, and people like you. And therefore, the question of algae has always been on the card for the last couple of years. In Ontario, by the way, we have a pilot demo, not we, but Ontario has pilot demo on the East part near UIT with the local utility there on, on the biofuel sites. And therefore, it, it is believed that with further research, we would be able to get large-scale bioplant material for the purpose of generating electricity. So for commercialization purposes, there are several paths. One path is, of course, through your own innovation center at the university. By the way, I have an ex-board of Ryerson. I've, I was on your board of governors till two years ago. So you have an excellent group there. The second is you come with your good ideas to the agencies that Roxy just talked about and make your application, the OPA or the OCE. And lastly, but certainly not the least, there are developing small entrepreneurial companies that are already in this. If you Google them, you'll find them. And therefore, you should be able to apply to any one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to add anything, I'll Cameron? I'll add something really quick. Okay. I, mean, I, think, I think your question speaks to the excitement and, and innovation in the, in the energy sector. I mean, the fact that folks are looking at new ways of doing things that have been done the same way for a long time represents really exciting opportunities. And so there's folks like you that are looking at, it, at, at, at new ways of doing things like uh, algae fuel. But at the same time, there's also folks like uh, uh, Boeing, for example, a very large company that's looking at how, how, you know, how can we fill the other end of that, uh, of that possible solution. So uh, it's exciting to hear that people are thinking about uh, these types of innovative new ways of, of, of entering the energy space. Thank you very much for that. Oh, just before we move on, I'd like to mention that uh, Jenny extends her uh, apologies. She had to uh, move on to uh, other commitments for the day, so she will not be joining the Q&A. Uh, but a reminder that if you have questions for OPA, please put them on our website and we'll address them there. Uh, the next question is, uh, it looks like it's specifically addressed to you, Ravi. It says, thank you very much for your presentation. I am currently enrolled in a master's program in geology and geophysics. Are there any opportunities for students like us in the energy sector? If so, when do companies usually accept applications from recent graduates? My expected graduation date is May 2013. Uh, thank you for that question. Your specific expertise in geology and geophysics actually would apply more to our sister concern, the Ontario Power Generation. You probably heard when Cam was talking about energy storage, there's also a below ground energy storage projects where compressed air can be stored in large caverns 
the federal government and the provincial governments and the utilities are all working to see how we can get those energy storage projects. And the Ontario Power Generation is working very actively in this space as well. And I think your sort of focus should be on those companies and on the consulting companies that provide the advice on the, geo, the geological and the geosciences side. Very good, thank you. The next question is from Godwin, and he's asking Cameron, with respect to technological development, what opportunities exist for chemical engineers in energy storage? So uh, I think there's, there's plenty of opportunities within the chemical engineering space. Uh, in Ontario, so, so uh, while we're developing a mechanical system, a flywheel system, uh, there are a number of, of battery technologies that uh, are showing a lot of promise to be able to serve some of the, the needs that utilities see for, for energy storage. So you'll see lithium ion technologies, uh, you'll see flow batteries. Uh, so you know, a, short, uh, you know, a short search on the internet or go to the Electricity Storage Association's website and you can find a number of different companies that uh, are, uh, are, are advancing uh, this, uh, this state of the art, and I think there's some exciting developments that will come out of that. And I know Hydro, Hydro One is also, uh, uh, also looking at, at, at opportunities in the battery space. Yeah, just to pick up on what Cam said, if you just take the lithium ion space itself, there are 14 or 15 chemistry variants, which we generally call lithium ion. You would have heard about the lithium air, the zinc air, the zinc bromine, uh, there are lots of variants in the chemistry side that actually drives these battery or energy storage systems. Well, thank you, Ken. Thank you, gentlemen. Next question is Ravi. I will graduate on the, at the end of December, and I want to join the Hydro One internship. How can I apply for that, and what is the requirement? Great question. Uh, we have three avenues that we normally seek input for students. The first is, I don't know if you've had a chance to be a co-op or an internship student while you were still a student, and if you did, congratulations. You've got some experience from our day-to-day -day workings. Uh, most of our jobs are posted on our website, and I would really ask you to look at that website and apply, because that's where it gets aggregated, and then those resumes are, are posted right inside the corporation for the individual managers to pick up and then call for an interview. So please stay tuned to our www.hydroone.com. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi. The next question is from Umar, and he asks, what is the best way for mechanical engineering undergraduates to get into the power sector? Give it a go. Yeah. Sure, thanks, Ken. Uh, yeah, actually, mechanical is a very integral part of the power system. If you look at any generator today, it's made up of mass, rotating equipment, ball bearings, cooling, thermodynamics, and kinetics. So mechanical is a very, very integral part. I think there's a misnomer that we see only electricity, and we focus on the electricity side. There cannot be an electricity without either a chemistry, a mechanical, or any one of the other inputs that make electricity in our business. Thank you, Ravi. Our next question is from Vishal, and he asks, I'm a graduate student in University of Windsor doing my automotive. My question is, what is the scope for automotive students in, in the energy sector and job opportunities as well as the growth rate in that field? Well, I, I think, again, there's, there's, there's a number of parallels between um, you know the automotive sector and what's happening in some of the in some aspects of the uh, uh, of, of the of the energy sector. So as we build out manufacturing facilities, the experience in the automotive sector is particularly relevant. Um, efficiency, uh, again, really as you as you scale with a startup company like ours, looking for uh, you know manufacturing efficiencies and how you how you actually. Uh, make that uh, make that make sense. You know, there's a, there's a lot of learnings that come from the automotive space. Uh, so uh, that's that, that's where I see the, the the direct connection to what we do. You, you might have some other uh, some yeah, exactly. other thoughts on it. Exactly, the electricity sector, the automotive sector, and the aerospace sector are actually all linked because they are high reliability, high dependability, highly secure systems. And so there is actually in the background a lot of transference of 
knowledge, tools, processes that goes between the electricity and the automotive sector. The second aspect of it is the electric car. The electric car potentially can be a small generator to every house should we choose to use it that way. And so that's another alternative way of energy storage that Cam talked about. So lots of great things happening in the automotive sector is something that we draw on. Thank you. We have a few minutes left, so we'll get, try to get through as many questions as we can. The next question is from Misam. Is there any opportunity for students in optimization and management science field? Absolutely, yes. And, and that's because as the energy space gets more and more conscious on efficiency, conservation, the cost of fuel rising, optimization is actually an imperative. You cannot avoid it. And a lot of people in the math area, in the reliability sciences area, and statisticians, statisticians are already being employed to be able to drive those optimization functions for our power systems, our transmission systems, distribution systems, and utilization functions. Here's another one that looks, uh, looks like it's for you, Ravi. But uh, Cameron, please join in if you have uh, something to contribute. I am working on grid-connected PV system towards my PhD. I am looking for some industry opportunity. Can you guide me how to start? Well, uh, okay, so I, I'll, I'll go back uh, um, to, to when I was looking for work coming out of, coming out of, uh, coming out of a, a graduate degree. Um, this, this I, I believe, just is, is, comes down to legwork. You know, you've you got you to find out what companies are operating in the area that you want to, uh, to work and live. So if it's Ontario, then, 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 then Ontario. Uh, find out who the companies are, find out who the project developers are, find out who the consulting firms are that are uh, 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 connecting these systems up, and uh, you know, do, do your homework and figure out who's, you know, who's, who's active in the space, and uh, you know, if you're passionate about it, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, that's where you start. Exactly, and what you have to look for is a stream aspect. Uh, do you want to be in the solar panel side, the inverter side, the connection side, or the grid operation side. So there is again in that, as Cam mentioned, there are slices and variants and job employers who operate in all that space that enable photovoltaic to the grid. Ontario, through the FIT program, is actually one of the most successful FIT programs that we have. If you come to the Ontario Power Authority's website, you should be able to see the applicants and all the activity going on in the photovoltaic area in Ontario. I'd like to add something to that, and that is uh, I'd like to remind you all to check out the, Connext, uh, the OCE Connect website where you can register your CV there as well as um, explore the uh, companies that have been uh, posting their jobs on site. So please don't forget to, to visit there. Uh, this looks like it's our last question. It comes from Mohamed Driza. Could you please describe how I can improve my skills to fit in your needs for the fuel cell or renewable energy sector? I'll take that while okay. and can add. Uh, yeah, fuel cell is another addition to the way we produce electricity. And it comes through the fuel cell technology, uh, whether it's through hydrogen as the primary fuel or whether it's through natural gas through a reformation process. And Ballard in Vancouver makes fuel cells. There are hydrogenics here in Ontario, Mississauga, makes fuel cells, an international company, like CAM, a very entrepreneurial company, and they make some of the best equipment that uh, goes all around the world. So there are several of them that you can choose, and again, it could be the fuel cell part, the reformer part, it could be the inter inverter part, you have to choose in that spectrum, albeit they're all fuel cell energy spectrum. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. I mean, if I, can, if I can build on to that at all, uh, I would say that, you know, because it's fuel cells uh, doesn't mean that you have to focus necessarily on the most intuitive of functions within that organization. They, they, they likely have uh, positions at these companies that, that focus on project management, on uh, marketing, on accounting, on uh, other areas that um, you know, a business needs to survive. So um, you know, 
just because it, your your uh, uh, you know sort of experience may not exactly line up with what you see the core technology being, doesn't mean that there may not be a fit for you. So if you're passionate about the space, think about uh, think about those other avenues. Well, that concludes our our program for today. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our very distinguished speakers, Ravi Sithapathy and uh, Cameron Carver, as well as Jelly, Jenny Millinen, and uh, for providing the excellent information for the student community out there. Thanks very much for joining us today. And before we sign off, I'd like to just remind you that uh, there will be a follow-on webinar down the road. We don't have the date yet, but please stay tuned. Keep, uh, keep uh, on our website to uh, see when that's going to be happening, or, and we can uh, send out a, a, an email blast as well. We would also uh, like to remind you that um, the Connects website is there for you. There's the Discovery Showcase next spring. We hope to see you there. And uh, one last thing is that we will be doing a feedback survey over the next few weeks and hope that you will take the time to just provide your feedback on uh, how you found the webinar today and if it was helpful to you. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies. <laughs>